Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is July the 3rd, 2022. And today we're going to be taking a look at the day of preparation. Now I had said in one of my videos before that the day of preparation was uh, preparation for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then when I was doing this study on the day, the day a biblical day, I realized that there was about three or four different definitions for the day of preparation. So I decided to nail, try and figure this out. And um, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to look at all of the verses for the day of preparation. So John 14, John 19, 14. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, This is Jesus being crucified. So this is Pilate speaking when he said, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he, he him therefore unto, him, unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. Now I want you to remember that it was um, about the sixth hour. Because we're going to establish a timeline here. So about the sixth hour, on the day of preparation, Pilate sent Jesus to be crucified. Okay, so let's read on. Because they're going to give us some more time, some more time frames here in this story. So Jesus was crucified. He put the, he put the name over his um, crucifixion on his post. And, of course, we know the soldiers taunted him. And the Jews, therefore, because... Oh, here we go. Let's start back up here a little bit. Because this is... When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So he just died here. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation, still the day of preparation that Jesus died on, that the lady should not, that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For that Sabbath day was in high day. Be let me I read something wrong it didn't sound right let's read it again the Jews therefore because it was the preparation that the bodies sh should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day for the Sabbath day was in high day besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away And after this, so he, okay, Jesus died. They broke the legs of the other, of the other men, as we know. But Jesus didn't have any of his legs broken because he was already dead. So after he, everyone was, everyone had died, after Jesus had died, after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. So after he was after he was dead, Joseph went and got the body. Let me see if they said anything about what time it was here. If they did, I missed it, but no matter. We'll continue on. They said in all of the other books. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre, wherein was never a man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. Let's go on. Okay, Matthew 27. Same story in Matthew. 
Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? So, he was going to release them a prisoner, as we know. We all know this story because of their preparation day, right? Um, or Passover, what, whatever you want to call it. We haven't established yet the timeline until after we go through the verses. But we do know it's the preparation day because they said it twice in the previous chapter. So he was going to release a prisoner to them. Um, maybe he was releasing them early, though. Maybe it was because of the Passover. We don't, who knows? When he when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in the dream because of him. Let's read this part. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of, of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And of course, Pilate didn't agree with it. and he was, But he did it anyway. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on our hands and on our children's then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And again, in the vinegar, and they crucified him and parted his clothes, and put the plaque over his, um, over his cross or over his pole, whichever you want it to be. It's a pole, but it doesn't matter. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. So Jesus was crucified. He was sentenced to death at the sixth hour. And there was darkness over the land from the moment that he was crucified until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Yama. Sabach the Thani Eli Eli Yama Sabach Thani. I don't know. I've heard that verse so many times I should have it memorized, but I don't. But So let's continue. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, oh, we don't need that. So Jesus, and Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So, six hour he was sentenced to death. Darkness came upon the earth. The ninth hour he cried out. He cried again after that and right after that he died. Six to the ninth hour. When even was come there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph who also himself was Jesus' disciple. Now we went over this in a previous study. This 3796 means afternoon. It can mean afternoon. They also say it means after it applies to the dark as well. So it will be after six. There is a figurative calendar that is there is a figurative calendar taught in the Bible. The calendar places high noon at twelve o'clock, just like the figurative yearly calendar. It has to work around some type of consistency, right? So figurative guidelines are placed so that you can get the picture, the spiritual picture of the Bible. And that figurative clock, there, the figurative clock is high noon is 12 o'clock. Midnight is 12, 12 at night. Morning starts at 6 a.m. and dark starts at 6 p.m. That's the figure to picture that is given by the Bible. So when even was come, when it says even, and this is after the after the markers for the evening, it's taking the twelve o'clock hour, which is the beginning of the evening, and it goes three hours after. Because it's mid, it's like a midpoint. I went over it in the last video. You can go back and look at the definitions. 
and then this is um, saying that it has it has already begun it is um, in the midst of it or it doesn't really describe it doesn't give a good description as to how far in on you have to get that from the context only that it's in the midst of this time so you can say when even was come is six o'clock or very close to it you can also say that it's nine o'clock because it has this word you don't really need this word for this one because it goes forward <laughs> but this has been changed it should be three seven nine six okay so but we're it should be three say it should be before the noon hour and before night so from nine to to noon and from three to six but we already know that Jesus died at nine right so it has to be after nine that's going to present a problem though because it conflicts with what we've been told so we're just going to leave this for now it's no big deal about it as long as we know what we're looking at it says after 12 and after 6 is what it says I am teaching that it means from 9 to 12 or from 3 to 6 and we'll continue on. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Now the day that follows the day of preparation is the Passover. If the Passover is the, it's a preparation, if the preparation is a preparation for the Passover, then the next day is the Passover, right? So this right here is saying the next morning. It's saying that he he, uh, he died. Let me see. So how would that change? I don't want to show you my calendar that I made. I made us a graphic. I'm trying to think in my mind how it would change if he died in the evening. The following day would still be the day of preparation. If he died that morning, the following day would still be the day of preparation. It would not be the Passover. Because this means the following morning. The chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Well, why did they come to Pilate? Because they had heard that Joseph of Arimathea had taken a body and buried him. So they go to Pilate and they say, Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away. And they say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last year shall be worse than the first. Whatever day it is, which I'm saying is the second day, I'm saying he, yeah, I'm saying it was the first day of the, the morning of the Passover. And um, there had to be at least one night left because they were afraid they were going to come at night and steal the body. Okay, Matthew 15. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him and parted his garments, garments casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. So... Do you remember when we read in Matthew 19 and it said that he was sentenced to death in the sixth hour and crucified the ninth hour? 
Well, how do we get to the third hour? Obviously, there's a problem here. But let's continue on. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. And when the sixth hour was come, <laughs> there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Okay. So they have the third hour he died of here, the crucifixion. So that could be sentenced to death or it could be he actually died. Then you come down here and it says the sixth hour, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour there was darkness matching the previous, the previous rendition of the story. And at the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Yama, Shabbat, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. Exactly the same as in uh, Matthew, Matthew 27. And it was John 19 that told us that he was sentenced to death during the sixth hour. So he gave up the ghost at 9 o'clock. So this must be the t when he was sentenced to death, right? But he wasn't sentenced to death at the third hour. He was sentenced to death at the sixth hour. Let's finish the story and see if maybe we can figure out more. And now when even was come, because it was the, prep because it was the preparation, again, even was come, because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath. So now we're told, him, uh, here is where we're told that it's the day before the Sabbath. I had to tell you that before. The day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. Some of them say he went in boldly and other ones say he didn't go in so boldly. But Joseph was rich, so I'm pretty sure he wasn't afraid. Okay, that's all. Well, uh, still, he would have had to have been careful because of, the, because of the Pharisees. Rich or no rich. I'm going to tell you why this is the third hour before we go on. The <laughs> They have taught us that Jesus died at 3 p.m. And what they taught us, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit, <laughs> I'm a little bit offended by this teaching, see, because they can just tell us any old thing that they want to tell us, and we just believe it. And it, it offends me. It, it offends me. It, it just, listen to what we have believed. We have believed. Now, this has never ever been done at all at anywhere in the world, okay? But what they tell us is that instead of using a regular clock to keep time, no, the Jews didn't do that. <laughs> they developed a special clock, see, that only cal that calculated the morning hours. So six o'clock was actually one o'clock. So they were running around at six a.m. in the morning saying it's one. And at at nine, that's actually three o'clock, see. So at nine o'clock, they say it was three o'clock. Noon was actually six o'clock or the sixth hour. And and three o'clock was the ninth hour. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it is utter they tell us anything. They just tell us anything and we believe it. You know why? They, they, they tell us because they know we're going to believe it. They take advantage. Let me tell you. I can't. can't listen. I, I'm working. I'm working on a video now. I want to teach you all. See, I'm so offended by this. And just because it, it we're so gullible. Who isn't gullible about their religion? You know, who? Doesn't who 
wants to believe that the preacher is up there lying all the time. It's our God. It's our God. Yeah, they have created a whole system of keeping time in order to deceive us about the time that Jesus died. The Bible says 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Nope, Jesus died at 3. Why? <laughs> Why? They didn't even work that hard to do it. This probably is supposed to say the third watch. The third watch of the night would have been 6 a.m. matching John. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. Then delivered he him, he delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. But no, we get to the book of Mark, and it says that he was crucified on the third hour, just knocking everything out of sync. Why? Because they had to throw a little bit of confusion in there so that you could let some teacher who's supposed to be smarter than you tell you what is going on with all of these verses that no one can make sense of. Of course no one can make sense out of them. It wasn't like that. It's the third watch. 6 a.m. That's what it's supposed to be. There's another scripture that says third hour in Acts. There's two actually. I only remember the one being right. I don't remember if the other one's right or wrong. But in the, in the book, in the other scripture, it's Paul talking about um, on the day of Pentecost. Now, I believe the scripture is correct, except for that part about the third hour. The, Paul says the third hour of the day. Listen, have you ever asked someone what time it is? And they said it's uh, one o'clock of today. <laughs> they didn't talk like that back then nor today it's it's the third hour of today what <laughs> it's the third hour period they're not drunk seeing that it's the third hour you don't need to tell the people that you're talking with at the time that it's the third hour he was either saying it was the third watch of the night or he was, he was saying, I don't know what he was saying because I do believe that scripture is correct. But there was something going on there because nobody tells a person the time, first person anyway, it's the third hour of today. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, what they're saying here, the, the whole thing about them having a system of time that they made up for no apparent reason is just it's just a, it's just a lie can you imagine listen let's just think logically here before we go forward okay uh, i'm gonna i have some more we have another scripture that we're gonna look at that's gonna show it's a lie but i want you to just think logically here for a minute let's jump ahead actually we're gonna jump ahead to we're not going to go over Exodus. It has its own problems. Let me mark because we want to come back here and then we'll do our last couple of scriptures. Okay. So let's just jump ahead to Exodus. Oh, I hope I marked the right place. No, that's not the right place. So you guys are going to get to see some of my markings here. Just ignore them. At this point, I've looked at this so much, I don't even know what these markings are for myself. Oh, here we are. Okay. Let's start from here. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month 
they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little, we don't need that. And ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it when in the evening. And they shall take it, take of it the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it and they shall eat the fish the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs and shall eat it eat it not raw nor sodden at all with water but roast it roast it with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. So let's think about this. They had to kill the sheep at even. We're told that was 3 o'clock. At 3 o'clock they kill the sheep. They clean the sheep. That's going to take about. I'm going to say about 15 minutes. Maybe to drain the blood. An hour and a half to clean it. Maybe an hour and 45. So now it's 4.45. I did a quick search on Google while I was doing this study. I didn't look it up. I just read the first the first thing that came up. And it said 7 to 9 hours to cook a whole sheep or a goat. 7 to 9 hours. So 4.45. Let's count our 7 hours. 5.45, 6.45, 7.45, 8.45, 9.45, 10.45, 11.45, 12.45, 1.45. The angel of death went out at midnight. Can you imagine David, who's the firstborn son, sitting there, not knowing what time it is. Is it midnight yet? Mama, can you check that limb? Is it done yet? <laughs> Did Moses get it right? Maybe I can just break a little part off. Because you can't eat it raw. It has to be done. <laughs> Little baby Elijah, everybody looking at him. Oh, baby Elijah, he don't know what's going on. He's happy and playing. About to die. About to die. Because the roast ain't done. <laughs> the lamb ain't cooked. <laughs> Finally, they snatched the lamb out. <laughs> now, poor little baby Elijah crying because his mom trying to chuck hot food in his mouth. Make him eat it. <laughs> Her and daddy about to lose a lung, blowing on that food so baby Elijah can eat the food. Daniel, no wonder they had to wear their clothes. And Daniel, he already ate his food. Tongue burning, mouth burning. Now he's running around trying to get everybody else down to eat the food so he won't drop dead. No wonder they had to wear their shoes and clothing. <laughs> so then you wouldn't slip. <laughs> Why he was running around. Finally, everybody eats some of the meat. Daniel's sitting there, meditating, wondering if it's midnight, wondering if it's too late. <laughs> Baby Elijah's still crying. <laughs> Mom and Daddy trying to appease him over his burnt mouth from eating that hot meat. <laughs> Look, it didn't happen like this. The Bible tells you what time Jesus died, and he died at 9 a.m. There's never been a clock. There's, it, it's offensive. There's no clock from morning. Until, it's not morning till morning because it's figurative. High noon is not 12. It's not. We have a figurative yearly calendar. There had to be a standard in order to sustain our understanding. I don't deny that. I don't deny that morning to morning, morning to evening in the Bible is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We went over scriptures yesterday that supported that very claim. Not yesterday, in the previous video. No, this, 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 it didn't happen like that. The lamb was killed at 9 a.m. <laughs> at 9 a.m. That's when he died. This third, this third hour conflicts with his very own verses. What? This is the 25th, 25th verse? Not even 10 verses later does it conflict with his very own writings. It's not right. 
They changed it from the third watch to the third hour. Or maybe the third hour meant the third watch. I, watch, I, I don't know. But what I do know is that he was sentenced to death at six. Because everything else syncs up. But this doesn't even sync up with itself. <laughs> it's not hard to see the error here. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. The bill of goods that they sold us, now that that's hard to see sometimes. The constant mockery of our re, of our of our faith. That's hard to see sometimes. And it ain't right. It ain't right that people take advantage of your love and your emotions in such a way. Well, let's continue on. We know what we're dealing with. We know we're not. We know we're dealing with powers and principalities. Okay, so it's not right. We know it's not right, and we move on. We were gullible. We, it was dumb to believe that they created a whole clock from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's dumb. We were all dumb for our religion. The whole idea is just dumb. <laughs> If you didn't believe it, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, because I sure did. I may have even said it here on this in these studies that I believed it. I had no reason not to. I believe everything they tell me. Everything they tell me until I look it up for myself and see that it's not true. I don't, I don't, I, even stuff that doesn't make sense. I think to myself, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> So I just put it on the shelf until later on when it can make sense. But I don't just dismiss it. Well, now I do. Now that I'm seeing through the lies, now I do. Forget what I was going to say before. I had, I was going to tell you guys something before I just recalled that I never finished it. Um, I was going to give you an example of how gullible we are but I think it's fairly I think it's fairly obvious <laughs> Jesus died at 9 9 a.m. let's continue on and that's what fits that's what fits the um, the even here if even was come you can say, and now even what's come, because it was the preparation. You can say 12 to 3. Uh, so it could be 3 o'clock here, the day before the Sabbath. But, um, what does that have to do with Joseph of Arimathea? He's not going to come for a body that's not dead. Jesus didn't die until, like, right, at, right after the hour. Like, right after 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock... He called out, and then he called out again, and he gave up the ghost. Right after 9 o'clock. Or right after 3 o'clock, whichever way you want to put it. But he's here he is coming for the body. This is, if you use this word, but if you interpret it correctly and say it's 3796, then it's almost noon. Jesus died at 9, and sometime between 9 and noon, Joseph of Arimathea came for the body. Sometime between 9 and noon. It's not specific. Okay. The 9 o'clock works is what I'm trying to say. That 37.98, it only works on a surface reading. It doesn't work in if you actually go in and establish a timeline for the stories. Or if you establish logic. It just doesn't work. And it really, I don't know if it ever works. I know for one time they don't use the 109.6 with it. And I think it's right then. Because they used it correctly. But when you see that 109.6, there's some shady work being done. <laughs> there's some shady work being done. And it probably doesn't work in a stream of logic. And it was about the sixth hour. And there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Same as all of the other versions of the story. 
And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Wow, this took a long time to do this. I have really been talking. We're at 35 minutes. We're going to wrap this up real quick. <laughs> and behold, there was a man named Joseph, <laughs> a counselor, and he was a good man and a just and that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. This word right here, drew on, means drew light. Remember, what? I, oh, actually, I just told you. So, as I see it, well, I did not. I told you in the last video. There is a guideline established where the division of midnight and noon is from noon until midnight it's getting darker okay and from midnight until noon it's getting lighter you're getting more and more light until you reach the pivot of noon and then comes the darkness after noon that's called the evening so here is telling us when it tells us that the sabbath drew light it's telling you it hasn't reached noon yet. That's the only way that it can draw light. So why does it say the Sabbath drew light <laughs> on the preparation? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to show you because we're already we're already late here. So I made a graphic. I just love it when I take the time to do this. I'm going to pat myself on the back. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Okay. <laughs> this is what fits the story. The Passover is on, the, the pre day of preparation is on the 14th. Preparation is when you kill the lamb and start to cook it. The lamb, if you start cooking it, this is the first day. This is a Sabbath. So, the day that you kill the lamb is the actual Sabbath. The 15th is not the Sabbath. So you kill the lamb on the preparation day. That evening is the Sabbath. That morning you kill the lamb. You start to cook it. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think I got that wrong. It's on the 14th at even. So you will kill that lamb. Oh man, I, may, I just realized that's... <laughs> So you're going to start cooking the lamb. You're going to kill that lamb the day before. And after, after noon on the 14th. So there. Hold on. All right. Let me correct it and come back. Hold on. Okay, everyone. I realized what I did. This is this was supposed to be for the next study, and it's too late now. We're at 38 minutes. I can't explain it to you. This is actually correct. The next study was well, probably not going to be the next study. When I did the Old Testament, I was going to point out to you that where it says "kill the lamb at even." They actually snatched a word out of there. They just took a whole word out. He's supposed to be killed between something and the evening on the 14th. So Jesus actually died at 9 a.m. on the 14th. But you just, you can study it yourself and find it yourself. I'm not going to change this though. It will just have to wait until we get to that part. But Jesus died between 9 a.m. and the evening of the 15th. That's when he died. You can go and check that word out for yourself. It's the word between. It says between the evening. It says something. They just took the whole portion out that said that he needs to be killed at a certain hour between the evenings. Um, I would tell you what it is, but I don't remember. I can't remember what the conclusion was on that. Because I've been working on, well, my memory isn't that good, to be honest. But he died 9 a.m. in the morning, on the morning of the preparation. The next day was the Sabbath. 
he they buried the body this day. Um, the Pharisees heard about it and they set up the guards the following morning and then Jesus rose at noon and I put I, I'm going to say I believe he rose at noon because I can't remember where I read that and I don't know if I'm going to put it in the study because I don't remember but I did see that somewhere that it was at least implied that he rose at exactly noon on the third day and so this is going to be kind of meaning I made all these graphics and now I'm so disappointed <laughs> they're wrong to you they're wrong for you but the study will come soon enough and then we'll be able to see it and look at it in a little bit more depth all right anyway I'm going to close out now and I will see you in the next video